Today I'm going to talk about After Effects rendering workflow versus Adobe Media Encoders. What's the difference between After Effects rendering queue and Adobe Media Encoders queue? What do you need to watch out for if you're used to the way After Effects renders a composition? Right after this. Hey everybody, welcome to AE Blues, a channel dedicated to getting through trouble in After Effects. My name is Roy. Today's topic is Rendering Workflow After Effects versus Adobe Media Encoder. So you're in After Effects and you want to render your composition and create a video file, but you want it to be high quality and small size. You need a compressed file. This is the way to go if you want to send it via email, show in a presentation, maybe upload to YouTube. The most popular compression method today is to encode an H.264 file. But the fact is that ever since After Effects CC 2014, you can encode a decent compressed file in After Effects alone. You can do that with Adobe Media Encoder or some other encoding software. You can still render in After Effects for editing purposes, meaning lossless files. But if you need a compressed file, you need Adobe Media Encoder. If you're used to the way After Effects renders a composition, you should watch out for the behavior which is different between rendering straight in After Effects and rendering with Adobe Media Encoder. Let's see how it used to be since the very beginning up until 2012. This is CS6, the 2012 version. I got a little composition here. I want to render this out and create a small size, good quality video file. I can send my composition to the render queue, click on the composition, Control M, this is the render queue. On output model, I can specify the format, click on the link. On format, I can choose H.264, OK, choose where to render. Click on the link, output 2. This is already set folder, save and render. After Effects CC, the 2013 version. By default, I don't have good encoding options in the format menu. Let's see. Control M, render queue, output model, format. I got no H.264 here. I can go to my preferences, edit, preferences, output, and put a check mark here. Show deprecated formats in output model. Then I get a message here, which basically is saying you should do those encoding tasks in Adobe Media Encoder. Click OK. Now in Output Model again, I can in the Format menu choose H.264. Once again OK. Choose where to render. Same thing. After Effects CC 2014. From this version on, you can encode a decent compressed file in After Effects. Let's see, Control M in the output model. No H.264 here, and I won't find an option to enable it in the preferences either. So what are my options? I can render a lossless format, QuickTime PNG or ProRes 444 if I'm on Mac, and take this rendered file to Adobe Media Encoder or some other encoding software, and create my compressed file from there or I can render directly from After Effects to Adobe Media Encoder. Obviously, the second option is better if you don't need a lossless format, so why render twice? Maybe I don't need the lossless version just yet. I need to approve with my client the preview version. So let's explore this option and see what to watch out for. When I render a composition in After Effects, I have my render settings in the render queue. Let's click on the link here. After Effects uses these settings for my render. Here you can find the resolution, time span, color depth, and also motion blur, frame blending, proxies, guide layers, and more. Its default best settings are full resolution and the length of my work area. And where motion blur or frame blending is checked on, in the layer switch in my timeline, it will take that into account. This is the usual behavior expected when rendering in After Effects. 
Now let's try rendering and encoding with Adobe Media Encoder. Click on my composition, Control Alt M. Media Encoder opens up. I can see my After Effects composition. This is a similar window to my render queue. Now I can encode my file by pressing the play button here. I can click on the preset. Adobe Media Encoder encodes the file directly from After Effects. So he's not taking those render settings into account. Resolution should be set in Adobe Media Encoder. Usually it's the default to match source, but could be different. Also frame rate, length of my work area. These are all pretty obvious. You can see them in the video settings in Adobe Media Encoder. But what's not that obvious is that also motion blur or frame blending, they will not be rendered unless you check the master switch in After Effects. Let's get back to After Effects. Got a layer here and I click on the master switch. Now I can see the motion blur. This switch basically is for previewing After Effects. Also this one from frame blending. You don't have to check them on when you render because in the render settings, you're on for check layers. So it's not current settings, which means that you need to have that switch turned on. So when you send your composition to Adobe Media Encoder, you get a current settings behavior. The way you left your timeline in your composition window, when you sent it to Adobe Media Encoder, that's the way it's going to render. When you send an After Effects composition to the render queue, it gets the current information from your composition. So you can render after a while and be sure that whatever you change here will apply to this render. A common occurrence is that you render a file and realize something is wrong. You can press stop, alt, stop. Maybe the color shouldn't be red. Control shift y change the color to green. Render again. And it's the current status of my composition. You can even re-render an old render. Control shift d And it will apply the same settings to the current state of my composition. This is the usual behavior for After Effects. In Adobe Media Encoder, the behavior is different. When you send your After Effects composition to Adobe Media Encoder, it is linked to that saved state of the composition. Meaning that if you change something, you have to send it again. You can't just duplicate the previous task. See, this is the previous task and it's red. But in After Effects, it's green. I need to do it again. Control Alt M. Now it's green. What actually is happening is that every time you send your After Effects composition to Adobe Media Encoder, it saves a project file in a folder inside your project folder. Let's open this up. Reveal source file. See this file, this is the current state of the project the moment I sent it. And that file is what the encoding queue of Adobe Media Encoder is going to render. So no more duplicating tasks. You have to change the location, maybe change the preset, all over again. When I send my composition to the render queue, I can specify a location for it to render to. Once I set that location, I can send all other composition as well. If I had more, select them all, control M, and they will all render to that same folder. This is of course very comfortable if you have your way of setting your folders. For me, I have an export folder where I render my encoded exports. In Adobe Media Encoder, every time you send a composition to Adobe Media Encoder, its default location would be a folder inside your project folder called your project underscore AME. 
You can change it. to another folder but every time you send another project you have to do it all over again it doesn't remember the last location you set like After Effects you can change Adobe Media Encoder's default location in the preferences but this will be a global change, meaning it will send all your renders to that folder, which is of course not so convenient if you have different projects. In After Effects, when I send the composition to my render queue and render it, I can open the triangle here and see what exactly is it doing, which layer is rendering, what effect is being rendered, how much time it takes for a frame. So this helps me to know if effect is bogging down my render. This is how After Effects gives me information during the render. I can try this in Adobe Media Encoder and render again and it's just a progress bar with elapsed time, remaining time. I can see uh, my composition here but not too much information. The bigger issue is about the render history. I can see in a project by project basis my render history. This is the render history of this project. So I can see how many renders I had, how long it took, what date, and in this information there's also the location. Everything is being stored here. The settings, the format, and the location. So if I need another render, again, Control Shift D, and it will render to the same location with the same settings. This is very useful. If I send the test to Media Encoder, once I close this window, all the completed tasks will be gone. So I won't have this information. And also, there's missing information here. I can't see the date. I, if I duplicate it, it doesn't matter because it's not the current state of my composition as I said before. I can change this behavior by going to Edit Preferences and remove this checkbox, remove completed files on exit, but Media Encoder is for all my renders, not a project by project basis. So this list could be very long, not so useful. I can have more information in the log file, show log. And this, these are all the renders I had since the beginning of the use in the software. So I can see the date, how long it took to render, locations. But again, this is for all my projects, so not so useful, not like the render history. When you render in After Effects, you can't keep working with the same instance of the software. You have to wait until the render is gone. There is a cheat though, this is my desktop, if I change the shortcut and add spacebar minus M, I can create another instance of the software. So I work in different instances and keep working. In Adobe Media Encoder, when I render, I can still work in After Effects. I can even close After Effects and it will still work in the background to give the information for Adobe Media Encoder. In After Effects I have templates. I can send something to my render queue and here are templates I created for my favorite renders. So if I click Make Template delete the untitled one. I can see my default for movie is uh, QuickTime plus Alpha, my frame default is Photoshop, my proxy is QuickTime PNG, and when I send a file to a render, by default, if it's a movie, it's gonna be this template. This is very comfortable if that's my favorite preset. So every time I send something to my render, it will be the default template that I set in the template output model. If I want to do that with 
media encoder. I have presets. There are many presets. And once I have a preset, once I set a preset here, if I send another test to my render queue, it will remember the last preset used. So it won't be the default for my outgoing compositions. I will have to, I have a preset already here. I have to choose this from the top. And every time I send a composition, it will be the last preset used. But if I change it, it will be the last preset. So got to watch out for that. To summarize what we've learned is, if you are going to encode your composition in a one-step render After Effects to Adobe Media Encoder, watch out for the differences in the way both of these handle your composition. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope this helps some of you. If you have any comments or suggestions, please be sure to leave them below. My name is Roy from AE Blues. Till next time, take care.